Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are safe and have watched the previous video on mass flow rate sensors. In the previous video, I stated that the flow rate sensors are divided into two major categories that is, the mass flow rate sensors and volume flow rate sensors. The first portion of this lecture discussed mass flow rate sensors only, whereas the second portion is reserved for volume flow rate sensors. Moreover, the second portion is further divided into two sub portions. The first sub portion will discuss only obstruction type volume flow rate sensors, whereas the second sub portion will discuss other types of volume flow rate sensors. So, in this video, I am going to limit my discussion to obstruction type flow meters only. Unlike mass flow rate sensors, volume flow rate sensors are never used for solids in powdered or grinded form. Volume flow rate sensors are more appropriate for measuring or metering the flow of gases, liquids or materials in slurry form only. At the end of the previous video, I said that in industry, mostly volume flow rate sensors are used. And this is because of the fact that they are much more simpler in construction and in working principle as compared to mass flow rate sensors. Moreover, they are also cheaper and have lesser maintenance costs. As I've already stated that the first sub portion of volume flow rate sensors will include only obstruction type meters. Therefore, let us start the discussion of these kind of flow meters. The idea in the obstruction type flow meters is to produce an obstruction in the flow of the fluid. And if you can remember some concepts of fluid flow from your physics course, then you must know that if the speed of the fluid that is flowing is reduced, its pressure increases, whereas increase in speed will decrease the pressure. This fact is responsible for creating an uplift when an aeroplane is running on the runway and hence is able to fly. Moreover, the same reason is behind a baseball ball or a cricket ball to swing when it is delivered by the baller. So all the obstruction type meters are going to increase the speed of the flowing fluid, which will cause its pressure to drop. The volume flow rate can then be measured by measuring the pressure difference across this obstruction. In fact, the volume flow rate is proportional to the square root of the pressure difference across the obstruction. The speed is increased by simply decreasing the diameter of the pipe through which the fluid is flowing. Now there are two fundamental questions, answers to which will allow us to measure the volume flow rate. The first question is, how obstruction is created in the fluid. Different obstruction meters achieve this reduction in different ways. I'll discuss orifice plate, venturi tube, flow nozzle, and doll flow tube as these are the most used obstruction creating devices in the industry. The second question is how to measure pressure before and after the obstruction so that pressure difference can be figured out. In the reference video, I have discussed range of pressure sensors, so you can consult that video for details on pressure sensors. However, one statement should be made over here that using two separate pressure sensors to measure pressure before and after the obstruction and then calculating the pressure difference is not an efficient way. The reason behind it is that measurement errors in both individual sensors will be added up when the difference of pressure is calculated using individual readings. To make more sense out of this statement, you can refer to the referenced video where I discuss that how errors are added up when multiple sensors are used to figure out any quantity. Therefore, it is highly recommended to use a differential pressure sensor which is capable of giving you the pressure difference directly. Mostly diaphragm type pressure sensors are used in such situations. As all obstruction type meters produce obstruction which causes a permanent pressure drop and disturbs the flow characteristics, a certain length of pipe is required after the obstruction for the fluid to regain its flow characteristics. How much length of straight pipe after what amount of obstruction is required can be found using British standard tables. However, especially in process industry, our rule of thumb is to use at least 
length equal to 10 pipe diameters after the obstruction. On the contrary, if it is not possible to have this much pipe length after the obstruction, then flow smoothing vanes or similar setup may also be installed so that fluid can regain its flow characteristics in a much shorter length of pipe. The positives of using obstruction type flow meters include the simple and easy structure that doesn't include any moving parts, hence giving a robust, reliable and easy to maintain overall setup. On the contrary, the issues include permanent pressure drop that can only be regained by using a pump downstream and prone to blockage if fluid contains heavier particles or is in form of a slurry. For slurries, ventry tubes are the most suitable ones because they have large minimum diameter of the pipe as compared to other obstruction type meters. Therefore, they are less prone to blockage because of the thick heavy particles present in the slurries. It should be noted that where taps should be made for taking the pressure readings. If the pressure profile of the flowing fluid is examined closely, it can be observed that just before the obstruction, the pressure rises a bit before dropping down to its minimum after passing through the obstruction. The location where the pressure drops to its minimum is not exactly where the obstruction is, but is a bit downstream. Therefore, pressure taps for measuring the pressure before the obstruction and after the obstruction should be carefully selected. The pressure before the obstruction can be measured theoretically from any point located a bit upstream from the obstruction, whereas the problem arises with the pressure sensing downstream. As the speed of the particles present in the fluid increases, the location where the minimum pressure is generated is shifted a bit. Therefore, if the volume flow rate has changed beyond a certain threshold, then recalibration of sensor become absolutely necessary. I've already stated that there are four different ways through which obstruction can be created. And out of these, the first one that I'll discuss is called an orifice plate. It is the most simplest and cheapest device that is available in wide range of sizes which can be used to produce an obstruction in the fluid flow. Orifice plate is nothing but a simple plate having an opening at its center. This opening acts as the obstruction and forces the fluid to pass through the reduced diameter, hence increasing the flow speed and decreasing its pressure. As this device is quite simple to use and inexpensive, the inaccuracies associated with orifice plates range between plus minus 2 to 5 percent of full scale. Moreover, the orifice plate can cause a permanent pressure loss equal to 50 to 90 percent of the pressure difference across the orifice plate. For example, if the pressure difference of one bar is created across the orifice plate, then a permanent pressure loss can range anywhere between 0.5 to 0.9 bars. Apart from orifice plate, all other obstruction type flow meters use specially designed tubes whose diameter reduce smoothly so that permanent pressure loss can be minimized. Of these obstruction flow meters, ventry tubes are the most expensive ones as they are longer in length and are precision machined from the inside so that minimum wearing occurs. This increases the lifetime of venturi tubes and its cost as well. On the positive side, venturi tubes induce only about 10 to 15 percent of the pressure difference as a permanent pressure loss. Doll flow tube has a similar shape as that of a venturi tube but is much shorter. It consists of two conical reducers that are inserted into the flowing carrying pipe. The shorter length and ease of manufacturing these tubes make them inexpensive as compared to venturi tubes. Although these devices have a little higher measurement inaccuracies as compared to venturi tubes, but they induce much lesser permanent pressure drop. Lastly, the flow nozzle has the simplest construction and is therefore cheaper than even the doll flow tube, but it induces around 30 to 50% of the pressure difference as permanent pressure loss. Till now, whatever obstruction type meter I have discussed, they create obstruction in the whole diameter of the pipe. On the contrary, 
pitted tubes produce localized obstructions only. Specifically talking about pitted tube, it creates small obstruction at a particular location in the fluid and hence gives the flow rate at a single point inside the pipe. It is important to note that a fluid flowing inside the pipe will have a reduced speed near the boundary of the pipe, whereas increased flow rate at the center. Therefore, it is important to place the pitted tube carefully because for measuring the pressure difference, one pressure reading will come from the pitted tube, whereas the other pressure reading will come from the tap made directly into the pipe, which is carrying the fluid. Anubar is a modified version of the pitted tube that has multiple ports, which creates localized obstructions at multiple points. The output given by the Anubar is much more closer to the average flow rate of the fluid, through the pipe as compared to that given by the pitot tube. And moreover, the placement of anubar is much more easier than the pitot tube. This was everything about the obstruction type flow meters that I have to discuss. And with the hope that you have understood the basic working principle and basic structure of various obstruction type flow meters that are used in industry, I would like to end this video. In the next video, I'll discuss volume flow rate sensors that utilize some other method other than creating an obstruction to measure the flow rate. Thank you and take care.